Welcome back to Valley Ford Sports Network for the second installment of the Four Chapters Disc Golf Tournament Series. Chapter 2 Air, driven by Innova. We're stepping into this beautiful, open, park-style course here at Oak Ridge, built by PDGA number 310, Dan Doyle. Huge help to the local community. And you can join the Valley Forge community at patreon.com slash valleyforge. I'm Chris DeMarco, here with Zachary Tassone and James Kolinsky. Hey, I'm pretty excited to be here and showcase Union County's first and only 18-hole disc golf course. First up on the card, Brandon Lockhart. Shout out to Brandon for being such a scary competitor last year at the Air Tournament. He is back and ready for vengeance. Yeah, you had to give him the chance to get on feature card after that incredible performance last year. And speaking of great performances as of late, Adrian Cohn, 957 rated, coming out of Philadelphia, PA. He's been throwing some incredible disc golf on this channel. Top player in the field. Mike Marcioni is coming up next. Shout out to nine career wins, including recently at the Visionary Open. He is here, ready to play. Rounding out our feature card for Chapter 2 Air, we've got Gabriel Galveo. PDGA number 132624. He hasn't been to a ton of Valley Forge events, but he's a high-rated player with quite a few wins coming out of Keyport, New Jersey, and he's looking swagnificent today. All right, well, getting into hole one, we start off with some of the steepest elevation change that you'll see on this property. Uh, there's a handful of large, mature trees that get a little bit of a late ceiling low, so you kind of have to uh, skip a shot in or get a hyzer to penetrate. Up next, the Chuck Disc sponsored player, Brandon Lockhart. If you're not following Chuck Discs. Brandon, we saw clip one of those late trees. That is the signature of this hole, that low ceiling throwing downhill. Adrian getting right under it should have a putt. <laughs> and he knows it. Very excited to have Adrian back on feature card. Zach, you said Mike Marcionis. Is that confirmed? I'm liking Marcionese more. <laughs> Do we know the correct pronunciation? I'm not confident enough, but if you like the sound of Marcionese, I'm willing to go <laughs> I'm, with I'm it. Italian, so I'm, we're going Marcionese. Up next, Gabriel Galveo. I wish I could have said he was throwing out of Brazil. Wonderful shot, just getting under those branches. And looking, what was the term you used earlier? Swagnificent. Got a little gallery. Quite the gallery here. I see uh, Mr. Liss back there. Shout out to him. I think he was following this card and uh, taking some stats as he was going. Yes, getting some advanced statistics for us. Short putt, Brandon Lockhart, 0% from circle two on the day. Not what you want to say. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> a little stall step putter from Mike comes up a little short. And we're hearing some rustling in the background. Tell us about the wind today, James. Yeah, the wind starts off pretty calm most mornings at Oak Ridge, but it's a pretty unprotected piece of property, being an old ball golf course, so... The wind can get pretty tough out in the open spaces, although I can't say that the wind caused that one. Certainly, the thing to worry about at this course, and obviously the thing to worry about at the Air Tournament. It's nice seeing, you know, this tournament especially be at a course where you have to take that into account on every single one of your throws, every single one of your putts. It's starting off at 8 to 10 miles an hour, but we can see some gusts later on. Yeah. On hole two, we're going to be actually playing the longest of the par threes on the front nine. The gap is right off of the tee, so once you get through that, you're going to be experiencing the wind out on the green. Yeah, most of these holes only have a few different obstacles to contend with. 
but it's still challenging to get that perfect shape on the flight to be near the basket. We know with the open greens, it's going to be more windy. And uh, even a little bit of wind can really mess up players at this level. Adrian not seeming to mind the wind at all. That was running the basket and stayed within, what, five feet? That's the perfect ace run you want to see. Wow. Very good job getting some good height out of that gap. He likes it. see the disc bouncing up and down there but great distance control from Brandon also sitting right there next to Bullseye I like how you were talking James about throwing through the gap and then experiencing the wind. It's uh, an interesting part about this course where you're throwing through these massive trees and you know these players don't entirely know what's going on out there. There really isn't much to gauge the wind with. I just love how grabby the grass here at Oak Ridge is. I mean this course would probably play an entire stroke or two easier if you were able to easily skip in. Tons of different talent out here at Chapter 2 Air. If this is your first time watching the channel, make sure you click subscribe. We've got tons of PDGA sanctioned events coming later this year, and you can just see how tight the field is at this event. It is just so difficult to take home that title of the Air King and find yourself wearing that pound bag out on the disc golf course. Certainly a floatier putt out of Gabe. Curious to see if he'll stick with that when the wind picks up later. Two putts from him, both a little high. Mike hits the little tester for his par. Now guys, this is such a scorable course. Do you think that makes the early start more important? Or if these guys go down say three or four, you know, is it easier to kind of make that late comeback? I think that every tee you step up onto on this property, you're just thinking about the birdie. And everyone that you don't birdie feels like a miss. But this course doesn't start off with the easiest of holes. Holes two and three are the only two on the front nine that actually played over par for the uh, first round. Speaking of hole three, this one plays kind of parallel to hole two across the old ball golf fairways. This one's a, a little bit more generous of a gap off the tee, but getting access to circle one is very difficult a bunch of circle two jump putts. Dan Doyle loves just nestling baskets under trees. We saw that big blue Atlas cedar sitting about 15 feet from the basket. Adrian trying to come in with this big spike hyzer. I wonder if he would be doing this if the grass weren't so grabby. Either way, it looks like he's got a low ceiling circle two putt. It is nice seeing how well this course has been cleaned up over the years uh, you can see some remnants of shrubbery under these trees but being able to see through the gaps is signs of a course that's being maintained very well just shout out to you guys for uh putting the work in there yeah i wish we could take the credit but uh, all credit is due to the union county parks department which maintains this entire 90 acre property it's mowed almost all uh, every single week They've cleaned up poison ivy for us on multiple fairways. They're doing a fantastic job. Mike, I see you rocking the Vivos and I like it. No two meter today, right? No. We can see a couple players kind of getting caught up in the trees, leaving themselves a low ceiling approach shot. Grabby grass really uh, helping Gabe out there. Fantastic effort from Brandon. Oh, 
so difficult to generate power from that low of an angle. <laughs> and it's so necessary to get lots of spin on the putt when you've got to throw that nose up, low ceiling shot. Adrian, unfortunately, looking at a pretty long par putt here. Adrian sinking a pretty long par putt there. Wow. <laughs> That's, I mean, if you're going to put yourself in a position where... Told you I put on a show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, that's great. But if you're going to put yourself in a position where you have to save a par, you know, the best thing to do is follow through and get it. Give yourself some confidence going into the next hole. Yeah, that's that's going to build way more confidence getting a par like that than kind of, uh, you know, a low approach shot. And Gabe, perhaps just a little bit of nerves. Kind of a later start for this tournament. I mean, the winds are already kind of going. Tough bogey to take here early on. But James, you mentioned hole three, one of the more difficult courses on this front nine. Two bogeys on this card. Hole three claiming some victims out here. <laughs> Here's got four. Can I get a four, please? Four, please. Little, uh... Big shout out to Matt Coltrera on Cash Cam. Takes a village out here. Hole four is uh, our first left to right shot. There's a couple of big bushy trees that can grab some of your discs up near the basket, provide a little bit of a tough putt if you don't nail the green, but this one is definitely a must get. I know it's early, chapter two air, we're just getting started, but I think this is my favorite hole on the course. I really, really, really like this shot, from the long tee especially. I love the long tee. 400 foot tunnel shot, but I also appreciate seeing this tee uh, for the amateur event. I feel like it's going to create a little bit more scoring separation. You can see people go for it. Yeah, scoring separation was the goal. James and I walked the course. Um, James obviously knows this course very well, but people were kind of disappointed when they saw we weren't going for some of the long tees. But with how tight this field is and only two round events, <laughs> we needed separation. Oh. A couple of doggos. A little bit of an ace run there from Mike. Oh. Right there, we're seeing that there are some patches on this course that will give you a skip. <laughs> Look out. That could have gone a few different ways. Looks like he was just behind it, I think. Just behind it, but a fast disc coming in on that green just leaves him outside of circle one. Talking about average distance from getting an ace, this hole has to be the closest, right? Like, are, are we expecting a ton more ace runs this round? I don't know. Chapter two air, everything's open. I see Jacob Liss in the background, the water champion himself, coming out here to spectate. I like seeing a lot of these guys leave putts high as opposed to dropping them too low. You gotta trust that in a tailwind, just like that, your putt's gonna drop, and you wanna give it a chance. If you miss high, you hit the band, you at least gave it a shot. Here's Gabe, looking to bounce back after that bogey. Some awkward footing, but cash is the birdie. <laughs> he was blending in in there. I mean, dude, those sunglasses are just unbelievable. Are those? I don't even know if those are pit vipers. Uh, there's a new tide turning in the sunglass industry, and I like it. Basket man, changing that. The whole five, we're gonna play uh, from the blue launch pad. It's going to be our only par four on our front nine. And this hole features a couple of mandatories on the right side, forces our players a little bit to the left. There's going to be OB on both left and right side of the fairway. Uh, so 
players are going to have to take two real throws in order to get anywhere near this basket. But again, a pretty open green. Taylor DeRuvo grabbing the eagle on this hole. I've been getting a lot of DMs and messages about people wanting Taylor DeRuvo on Chapter 3 Earth feature card. And I just want to make it official because I'm a man of the people. Taylor, you're on. Chapter 3 Earth feature card camp call. Let's go. Earned it. It's looking like we're seeing a couple of uh, layup forehands, so no eagles from this card. But I do appreciate that this hole is broken down to two very distinct shots. And if you're not going for the eagle, all you're looking for is consistency. You want to be throwing the same shot that you threw in your practice round to make that approach shot even easier because there is OB all around the basket and you want to know that you've thrown this shot before. No reason to bring too much danger into play off the tee pad. If you miss these mandos, you have to go to a drop zone, which is uh, the short tee. I'm on a quarter. Certainly would rather be thrown two than three. I see Steven Mitchell out here. Big shots out to him. I know he's a big help in the Oak Ridge community. Well played, high stall shot over the OB, trusts his disc to crash down. Gabe's got such a nice backhand form. I didn't know he had such a good sidearm, but he's busting it out today. This is one of those greens that I can just envision in a couple of years when Oak Ridge becomes even more established. Just the course letting you let the grass grow out a little bit, really distinguishing the OB lines. Ooh. Cutting it close there on the OB. Beautiful flags placed down. I don't know what amazing, awesome disc golfer did all these lines and flags. James, you got any idea about that? I don't know. Somebody who deserves a, a beer. <laughs> <laughs> it was James. I was going to say, I was like, yeah, we can't let those bad last part show us up. Yeah. <laughs> Lockhart with the longest look for two, for three out of the group. Ooh. Big spinner from the kid from Vernon. Heck of a shot. Taking advantage of the wind being down for a moment. A little bit of an elevation drop. Very confident but I saw him look at the str I love guys that putt stagger but then eventually go to the straddle jumper. He was at about 60 feet with that straddle. And then we see him from 40 with the stagger. Mike Marchionese sneaking in there for the birdie three. This is looking like a pretty good hole for our card. And this is what I'm expecting to see a couple of times today. It's a hole that all four players really break down pretty well. This course... $25 of charity? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adrian, Adrian calling for a charitable donation. You have that covered, right? I absolutely do not have that covered. But hey, things are getting going here. We're just getting started. Hole six starts off our uh, string of musket par threes. The hole's a little bit uphill and the basket's a little bit elevated, but there's no obstacles on this one. No major obstacles. I do appreciate at Oak Ridge that there are a bunch of small things that kind of get in your head. Like this is slightly uphill and the basket is slightly elevated and we've played five holes with a little bit of wind going this way and that way. So these players are stepping up to this tee thinking, all right, what exactly do I need to do? And you're seeing, you know, Gabe come up a little short, Adrian come up a little left. Might be a sign of overthinking what they need to do. James, what are you doing on this hole? Are you just going with a putter backhand or like a driver forehand here? Do it. I prefer the overstable mid-range approach, uh, something that I can give a little bit of height to, something that's confident coming back. This hole is actually the only hole that's been aced during our tag rounds and it's been hit twice. Just this one? Wow. I'm sure there's been plenty of apparatus hits. I mean, there's so many holes on this course under 300. 
Lockhart with a long look. Just short. Well, it was dead center. <laughs> he would. He would run that. I think on a normal height basket, that's in. <laughs> that was a really confident bid from Gabe as well there. Sneaking in for the par. I really like his putting form. A little bit of hesitation before he releases, but a real clean pop out of the hand. Mike's starting to pick up some momentum. Getting a stroke on the car. It's got to feel good. And up next, we're going to step into a real wooded, nice hole from Dan Doyle. Just an absolute visionary here in New Jersey. We sat down with Dan for a quick minute at the tournament just to get his insight on how this course was built and what he's got coming up next. Um, Dan Doyle, BDGA number 310. I stumbled on flying disc sports and ultimate and disc golf all at about the same time, which was probably about uh, five minutes after I went to the Rutgers campus as a freshman in 1974. But I knew early on that I, I loved designing. To go to this blank canvas of land and design this flowing play space that a lot of people get to play on, it just it, it felt good to do that. I mean, I go to a blank property and just I wander and wander and wander and certain holes just present themselves and then I look for compelling natural features, rocks, uh, the majestic trees. My current project is in Sussex County, New Jersey. Uh, the name of the course is going to, going to be called Papacating Park. It's a great opportunity because of the kind of land that I was presented with. It's almost like an ace place course but very specific flight lines on almost every hole that will challenge the short game of even a advanced level player. So I'm just really looking forward to just keep designing and playing as long as I can. I mean, I'm in my, I'll be in my 50th year in this game next year, so hopefully I can get another 45 or 50 years in after this. Yeah, thank you so much to Dan Doyle for his creativity and hard work here in New Jersey, New York. I mean, the guy's built courses everywhere. He's just an absolute legend. And uh, when I saw he was registered for the event, I was extremely humbled. I knew we had to talk to him for at least a second. Yeah, this is kind of a legacy property for him. We've been trying to get a disc golf course in here for almost a decade and finally got it done. Yeah, definitely hoping to sit back down with Dan over the coming years and just learn more about his story, learn more about how disc golf came to be here in New Jersey. Really feel like we're building up a lot of momentum, lots of new courses coming in, lots of more, uh, a lot more people hosting good quality tournaments that I'm hearing about. So I'm excited for the future of New Jersey disc golf. And I mean, oh, I hit band. Oh, That's hit off the band. Look at that. Oh baby. Yeah, hole seven's the shortest hole in the course, so these guys are definitely gonna be hunting the basket. Yeah, you're not you're not getting replays uh, for for apparatus hits on this hole. You you got to put it in if you want that replay. <laughs> It's nice seeing some trees on this course. <clears throat> a little bit of woods never hurt anybody. Adrian running the basket and staying close enough to pick up the birdie. Yeah, James, I know, obviously, first time I came to this course, I believe was in 2019, uh, you and Dustin Wolf hosted a tournament, I believe. Was he a part of that? Yeah, yeah, he and I actually put together the original iteration. It was a charity event just to show viability of the course. We brought in 18 temporary baskets. Shout out to Adam Harris for driving 18 baskets across the state so we could run a one-day tournament. I remember seeing him pull up with all those baskets, and I was like, okay, that guy, that guy. Yeah. Holy. Yeah, we're just a little putter or mid-range approach shot. This one's got a little bit of a low ceiling, especially close to the basket. Again, a little bit of an uphill right on the green. This one, you definitely just want to stick it close and get your two and move on. And those trees are smack dab in the middle. 
really makes you choose left or right gap. Both are perfectly viable, but if you don't make that decision, you're going to end up hitting something coming up short. Adrian with a couple fortunate bounces, and he might actually have a good putt for the birdie, too. This looks a little high. Squeaks in underneath. He'll have a slightly uphill putt from, looks like, 25 to 30 feet. James, I know this is a mixed layout, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but do we know generally what par is playing at here? I would guess maybe, what, 9-10 rated? Yeah, I'm not the good one to ask on that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Off the top of my head, okay, I do man. not know. I'm, just, uh, I'm looking at Lockhart two down. It feels a little slow right now. Do you think that uh, – where do you think most of the field is at this point? Definitely going to be under par. There's – only a couple of holes on the entire course that played over, and the whole property today played almost three strokes under par. Wow. For the whole field. I think the question we should be asking is the mentality of the players who aren't getting all of these holes. I guarantee you everyone who's going to be in contention for winning this tournament could come out here on a practice round and birdie anything in this layout. So, Mike, tough par putt from about 18 feet there. Oh, that was his birdie. Okay. That's a tough break for Mike, just as he was starting to get some good momentum. But yeah, we're, that's what's going to be tested from these players, is who can take that silly par or unfortunate bogey and bounce back and get the next two or three, or even more, because everything's getting Hole 9 is dealer's choice, so you can throw through a whole bunch of different gaps, right side, left side, hyzer, flip it up, turn it, be a lefty, be a righty. All you gotta do is make your putt on the big open green near the railroad tracks. Seeing Adrian go wide. Is that sidewalk playing as OB here? Yeah, this whole park is a multi-use park where we have uh, big pedestrian walkways around the outside, bikes, so every walking path and across is OB. Down, man. You can't throw it 150 feet up in the air and then say down. <laughs> that is accurate. He did do that. I actually do really, really like this hole as well in terms of the shot shapes we see. James and I went out for a round after the tournament like we always do. We had about 20 people with us. And I saw a lot of like 915 rated golfers throwing really good spike hyzers. I absolutely love how accessible Dan Doyle design is. Tons of shot shapes for all players of all <laughs> skill levels. The main point being that you don't see most players of that level throwing the spike hyzer. It's not easy. really getting off the tee super clean so we're gonna see a lot of uh, jump putt approaches to finish off our front nine here <clears throat> An honest bid We'll be cleaning up our pars, and we're looking at the scorecard. Adrian at a nice minus five. You have to assume he's at least somewhat happy about that one. I'm wondering if these guys are looking at the scores right now for live and judging their performance against everyone else's. <laughs> Again, I just love having Cohen out here. So many new faces showing up to these events every time, and yet it feels like it's the same people. I absolutely have been loving the vibes. We get players coming from six, five, five unique states. That's a little bit low for us. Shout out Chris Costley coming from Maryland. A couple new players from New York with Connor Eckhart and Dan Doyle. The Adrian Cohn effect is in full effect. Alex Abel, Andy Chow, Corey Neal. You gotta believe at least some of these guys are friends of Adrian. And of course, Shane Miller from Virginia. 
folks, there's your front nine. Do not forget to drop a comment down below. Click subscribe to the channel. We've got 27 holes left to crown an air king. We'll see you on the back nine.